welcome back everybody to a quick little video today where I, I started a new campaign and I have, want to talk about the two early game builds that I have. I have the want to talk about the fodder bro and the early frontline bro. And just a quick disclaimer, uh, for the people who doubted me in my amazing top 10 video you should watch, I did pick the fish helm, the antler helm, and the dragon helm on this seed. And you don't want to know what my seed name is? Doesn't fucking tell you. Alright, we'll look at the loads. The decorated full helm hoarders. This campaign is getting the dragon helm, getting the fish helm, and getting the antler helm. You may have thought I was lying when I said I picked the seed based on those, but I wasn't. But, anyway. Talking about these... So, uh, you know, I got this uh, shitty little company right here. <laughs> these guys are pretty ass. But I want to talk about some uh, the two builds. Now, I don't have any fodder characters left. Um, die, expendable, bait, bait, die, die, bait, 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 died. They all died. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to talk about that build first. So we're going to use one of my existing guys and pretend he had the right perks. So I have uh, somewhere on the screen, you're going to see what uh, a cutout of my spreadsheet. Probably over here on the right or on the left. I don't, re I don't really know yet. Forgive me. But so we can look on this together. So we're starting with nine lives on this character. On the pretending Vander was a, a 40, 48 HP guy who didn't actually have any good melee defense. If he had no melee defense, this guy would have been bait. Would have been another bait character. So we start with nine lives. Because the point of a fodder bro, the fodder bro, this is the philosophy we're, we're working under, is that they exist to die. Their job is to die so that characters I care about don't die. They are to take hits. So that characters who are squishy and leveling so that they don't become squishy when they're level 11 don't die and don't take hits. So nine lives keeps these shit brothers alive. That is good. That gives them more time on this earth to die. That is why you take nine lives. All right. N so next, I was thinking gifted, but then I got, I got to thinking to myself, why would I want gifted? Gifted makes the brother better. But these brothers exist to die. That is the running theme. So, to help them tank more hits, we're going Colossus. Colossus just means more hits. A lot of the times, you're going to hire early brothers like thieves who are trash. Like, you just get you just got a bad roll on a thief. Or a bad roll on a farmhand. And they don't... Or a farmhand, I guess, has HP. But a bad roll on, uh, I don't know, a miner. Or a daytailer. Or a peddler. Or a fisherman. And they need good HP. So you just throw Colossus on there. That's why. Alright, next, we're going Rotate. The other reason you go Colossus is because nothing else here really makes any sense. I guess you could say Recover, but they're not going to last that long. Rotate, because when a brother you care about is in danger, you rotate in the guy who's going to die. Yep, you didn't see that one coming. So you rotate in to save brothers. Rotate will save characters. So you take Rotate. Next, I take Taunt. I was thinking Brawny. But then I got to thinking, these characters should probably not be alive for more than like four levels anyway. So, um, and they're not going to be living, they're not going to be running around in anything more than like 110 and 110, 105 gear. That's not that much fatigue. You're not going to get much out of Brawny at this point. So I think taunt is good because again, taunting. You taunt people who would hit brothers you want alive. Oh, they hit. Oh my god, they hit Mr. Bait? No! Oh, you, you wonder why all the Bait characters are dead. Because they had Taunt. And they would Taunt people so that they get hit instead of the people I care about. Alright, after Taunt, uh, there's two philosophies. I'm going with Mace Spec. There, there's definitely an argument for Spears. Spears and Swords, probably Spears, because they have no accuracy. This guy's got 48 AM. I can't give him anything but a Spear. But, at the same time, Maces to stun people into submission could work very well. Uh, if they've got decent aim but suck in other ways, I'd probably give them a mace. Maybe, if not, I would skip mace spec and just go straight into the next perk, underdog, and give them a spear. Underdog is just good because they can uh, tank more hits because they're not getting hit every time. Underdog, you just always take underdog, so I don't need to explain that. Next, I would go shield spec, I think. Uh, there's an argument for Battleforge. But they're not going to live long enough to where Battleforge does much for you. Like, what's uh, who's got Battleforge? Someone's got Battleforge. All right, you have Battleforge. Let's give you like typical shit armor. Uh, let's give you a, a one, a 105 and a 110. 
102. 89. Yeah, that's not getting you much with Battle Forge. So who does that doesn't get that doesn't do anything for you. But shield spec, you're trying to min-max taking hits. And by taking hits with higher melee defense means you're not gonna take as much damage. So you can stay alive. And then after that I would take Battle Forge. And after that, this character should be dead. This is a bait character. They're all dead. You know, how long do these dudes last? Oh man, die. He lasted fucking six battles. Bait lasted two battles. Bait lasted three battles. These two somehow lasted a while. I got to, I had to get them killed. But bait, like, they, they didn't last very long. Let's be real with you. So they served their purpose um, by dying. So uh, they're not going to last very long. Which means you don't... I, I haven't even finished the, the level spreadsheet. I'm hoping it's over here where my cursor is. Um, so I, that's all we're going up to. But next, we have the early front line. Uh, like, this dude is an early front... Everyone here is essentially an early front line. Like, this guy, maybe not. He's my nimble front line. Ooh. But, like, uh, like this guy's early front line because he has one star. One star melee defense. Decent HP. Decent uh, fatigue and iron lungs. Like... That's a guy I'd actually want to care about. So going into that build, now uh, I don't recommend taking student on these guys. This is a character that I think, I don't think this guy's going to make it to 11. I don't want him to make it to 11. He's not actually that good. He's good enough to where I don't want, I don't actively want him to die, but I don't, I, he's either going to get dismissed or he's going to die before he makes it to 11. So I, I wouldn't take student, find someone else. Uh, he took nine lives because I think he's supposed to be bad initially. This is probably what this is probably the build that we're looking at right here. He's got you know he's got two attack stars, decent defense with no stars, good HP without Colossus. So I took uh, I took uh, student I guess instead, but whatever. So I would take Colossus first because they're not going to last that long and they need to have HP. Again, you're taking a lot of like shit brothers early on who maybe don't have a lot of HP, so just give them HP. Uh, next up we have Gifted. I think Gifted is worth it on these characters because what Gifted does is it gives them more attack, more defense, and probably more stamina or more or more resolve. So uh, these guys, they will not last to level 11. So the stat points do matter. Once you get to 11 and you start like, if a character goes to 22, level like 30, those three extra points you get from Gifted don't matter. Because you've gained an extra 27 points in the by like leveling, or whatever the or 20 points, whatever it is by leveling. But when they're not making it to level 11, or they maybe making it to 11 and then getting dismissed, um, those three points in attack, three points in defense do matter. Those are very useful, and you're keeping these guys around for long enough. How many battles have you been in? He's been in 60 battles. So, uh, getting those extra stat points really does matter, because you are getting that extra chance to hit. That chance to not be hit, that extra fatigue, that's going to come in handy in those battles, because he is going to last a while. So I would, I do think Gifted is worth it on these guys. Alright, next, obviously we have Rotate, we've talked about Rotate, use Rotate. And we have Brawny, these guys will last long enough to where this guy's in minus 24, minus 17, where, um, how much stamina is that? He has 101 and goes down to 73, he'd have a lot less if he wasn't wearing it with Brawny, so Brawny is just an amazing perk. You obviously go underdog next. We talked about underdog. You go battle forge. You could argue nimble. I am trying to build a nimble bro, and he does. Uh, once his armor goes, he's he starts dying really quickly. So I would just go battle forge. If they have low stam, uh, that that fucking sucks. If they have like pitifully low stam, I guess you'd go battle for or uh, go nimble. But I, I don't, I'm not liking the looks of Mr. Nimble here. Mr. Nimbly Bimbly is probably not going to last. Uh, this guy, though, Battle Forge, you know, you do get a lot. He's at 84, but his armor's trashed, but still. Uh, after this, I think Berserk. Berserk, if you've looked at my perk video, is amazing. Uh, it's good. He, The thing about Berserk is Berserk is good on two-handers and one-handers. And these guys, I don't think you should weapon spec them because they're not min-max characters. They're supposed to get you. There's... They are the the fodder bros to the guys you actually level. Like, uh, this dude here. Triple fatigue, triple melee skill. This guy, double melee skill, triple fatigue. 
like and then starts with 19 at four with no star he started at like 13. So these two are amazing so this guy becomes the fodder bro so that these two can live or like this guy becomes the fodder bro or this guy right here i don't really care about 65 17 at five when i have 76 at four <laughs> like this guy's just better like after i have leveled this dude forever so now i need to keep these guys alive so I don't want to weapon spec them because they're going to die eventually. I'm not like trying to write these characters out and make them the best they can be. I'm just trying to get them to where they need to be. So I don't think Berserk, I think Berserk is too specialized. Obviously, if you find a, a named great sword, give it, I'll give it to this dude and sword spec him. But I, I'm not, I'm just running around in like rando weapons. So I don't really care. Uh, I would go recover next because now I'm reaching the point where I'm going to recover. I'm wielding a two handed sword. I'm wearing heavy armor. I need to recover. On a guy in like with 82 stam like this, he probably doesn't need recover that much. He can just like kind of the battles are going to be quick enough to where he can get away with having that stam. But once you start throwing on really heavy shit, like you really need recover. Uh, what's after that? We have all right. I'm kind of going out on a limb. I'm going to say indomitable. Because once you get to, like, level... This dude's level 10, and I'm on day 107. I'm in... I'm actually in a green skin invasion. So I'm starting to face Orc Warriors, and I need a Dominable to face Orc Warriors. If I'm fighting Unholds, I need that. Fighting Orc Young, I need Indomitable. There's a lot of places where I need Indomitable, and I don't want to have nobody with Indomitable on my team. So I think giving these guys Indomitable so that they can just last a little bit longer... Is, uh, is pretty good. I'd run Indomitable on my late game frontline anyway, so I don't, I, what I'm giving up is, I'm not, I'm not really sure what I'm giving up. I'm taking Colossus and Gifted, so I'm probably losing out on something at some point, because I'm not, like, like, I'm losing out on the weapon spec is really what these early frontline is. And then I'm taking Killing Frenzy. You, I think you could maybe get, take Killing Frenzy for indomitable but i think it's just safer to have indomitable i definitely take berserk over indomitable in the order but uh just the survivability of the, the flexibility indomitable gives you in orc fights is so useful and killing frenzy you can get away with not having it all the time but this is just like the early frontline character i think and this really doesn't stray too much from a late game frontline character um but I think as starting a new campaign, I just wanted to try um, trying out new builds. And I just wanted to talk about the distinction between these two bros. Because the fodder bro, I don't want to throw this dude in at the beginning. I don't want him to die. So the fodder, building a, a fodder bro with taunt, specifically like taunt and rotate and nine lives, will really help uh, progress your campaign because you're not losing those good bros early on. And then knowing how to make your early front line and not like... Oh, well, like, do I get, I found this great sword. Do I, like, sword spec them? Or do I try and, like, hope for a better weapon? Or, you know, like, it, for a lot of early players, not, like, you're, people are inexperienced. When I started this game, I didn't really know what I was doing. I got built some guy about the campaign. I gave him fucking shield spec, and I gave him mace and hammer mastery. That's, like, really dumb. So, <laughs> I want to, like, you know, streamline a build here that actually works for me. And this is the build I'm going for, because it works for, it's flexible enough. It, I could just throw a like a freaking duelist, a mace duelist on here, and it'd work the same because I'm not forced into any one category. So when characters are new, I can do that. Kind of rambly, but I'm in a little. I want I'm in an explaining mood today. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys have found this helpful. Early game archers, archer builds don't really change, so uh, I'm really just talking about frontline here. That is all. I'll see you all around.